What's cooking everybody? I'm Dave Altizer from Kino Tika. Today we're talking about the Panasonic GH5S. We're answering the question, is this thing really a cinema machine? Before I get started, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. I know you want to do it. Come on, please give it to me. I need it. I'm shooting this video on the GH5S right now. Otherwise I would be holding it, showing you what it looks like. I'll just throw some sexy B-roll in there right now. This camera seriously is a movie making machine when you look at the specs alone. This thing can do 10-bit 4K. Now it's nothing new. The GH5 does 10-bit 4K, but this camera, in my opinion, really ticks a lot of boxes that the GH5 just did not tick when it comes to professional movie making equipment. The ISO performance on this thing is amazing. It's really up there with a full frame camera, to be completely honest. I've been able to crank this thing up to like 10,000 ISO and it still looks rather decent. We're here testing the GH5S. We're doing an episode using this camera in a more professional setting, but I am challenging myself because we only have one lens. I use the GH5S with this lens shooting 4K at 10 bit, with the exception of some slow-mo shots, and it was all shot in V-Log. So I'm gonna just talk over some of the footage that I got. So just look through some of the footage here as I talk you through it. We went to a park and the talent sat down on a rock at first and we got some shots using the Movi and the M5 uh, with the GH5S. It balanced perfectly because of course it's such a small camera and using the Movi on the GH5 just looked super fluid and really great. Because I wasn't using any lights and because we were so run and gun and there was zero budget whatsoever with this project, I was relying completely on the dynamic range and the malleability of this image to sweeten it and post a bit. Everything was shot in the 400 megabit all I 4K 10 bit recording mode. That's a mouthful. The GH5S has a very well controlled color science that I really find very pleasing. I also really liked the fact that the sensor doesn't have in-body image stabilization. Having a camera that is just a normal camera, putting it on a movie the way it's designed to be, just looks natural. And the truth is, IBIS can sometimes look really weird, but I actually prefer the look of a handheld camera and the look of a camera on a proper gimbal or Steadicam system. Of course, you can still use lenses like the 12 to 100 or the 12 to 35 because these lenses do have IS built in. We've been using cameras with IS for years and IS is great. We all love IS. IS is good. This camera can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second. It's amazing. What camera can you tell me in the 2000-ish dollar price point can shoot 4K at 60 with 10-bit also, with all these amazing features that this camera has? There's just nothing like it on the market. You can even do 240 frames per second in 1080p mode. I just am loving all the specs on this thing. It's amazing. All those specs and all that stuff is totally useless if the image sucks. And as you can see, the image quality really is great. The footage is holding up really well and once you grade it, it can really look really nice. This sensor has two base ISOs. The base ISO is basically supposed to be giving you the best dynamic range and the best kind of color accuracy. This camera has two. The GH5S base ISOs are 400 and 2500. So that means 400 up to 2500 has its own setting of dynamic range and noise and then 2500 and up to like you know 10,000 or so is going to give you the same look in terms of iso performance this camera has anamorphic mode what camera manufacturer puts anamorphic modes in two thousand dollar consumer bodies again that's why i love panasonic right now they're doing so many innovative things and they've been doing it for a while i know that i'm late to the party a little bit here but again it's never been that appealing to me because the low light was so bad because the dynamic range was bad and because the bit rate wasn't good the gh5 of course has the high bit rates in anamorphic mode it actually has a better anamorphic mode it's a 6k anamorphic mode because the sensor in the GH5S is only 10 megapixels. 
they can't do a 6K anamorphic mode, it's just a 4K mode, but anyways, the noise performance to me is what takes this camera over the edge and makes it really like, honestly, the perfect camera. The only thing that could get better over time is the autofocus and everybody talks about this. I would love to see a phase detect system built into this camera. It would really take it over to the edge and make it really ultimately the perfect camera. This camera has the ability to put in an XLR adapter. You can plug that in. Full XLR is plugged into the camera, phantom power, everything like that. The eighth inch jack is great. The preamps in the camera are fabulous. Both card slots are UHS two speeds. So that means you can shoot at 400 megabits per second in 10 bit 4K. So the sensor size for video is roughly 1.75X compared to 2X from the GH5. So that means that a 12 millimeter lens is roughly a 21 millimeter. Put the extreme speed booster on there and now you're literally talking a 1.1X crop on full frame. So you're almost a full frame sensor at that point. This camera doesn't even do that in 4K. It does a 1.3X. It's actually really funny because the 5D Mark IV when you're shooting 4K is the same crop as the native sensor size of this camera. I really think YouTubers have kind of put a bad taste in people's mouths for the Panasonic line because of the autofocus. Honestly, with my tests, with this new hack that everybody's talking about, the autofocus is great. I haven't had any problems with it. It's tracking really well. There are times where it goes out, but you just hold the trigger down and boom, it's in. It locks onto the face easily. You can tap the screen and it works great there. And the focus peaking on this camera is also great as well. At the end of the day, the reason that I choose the GH5S as a filmmaking tool and as my modern tool for cinema and YouTube purposes is the versatility. Being able to put a PL mount on it is fantastic. Being able to put a speed booster getting me up to almost full frame is amazing. When I wanna be small and lightweight, using Micro Four Thirds lenses that are already super tiny and amazing is great. That Micro Four Thirds sensor isn't as much of a limitation anymore in low light because this camera is a beast in low light. The color science, in my opinion, is finally acceptable. It looks very similar to Canon in my opinion and that is a good thing. It really comes down to color science being so much better on the S and the ISO performance being so amazing on the S. Hope you guys enjoyed this video about the GH5S. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. Once again, I'm Dave Altizer. This is Kino Tika. See you next time.